Okay, let's sing the song. Strength will rise as we wait on the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We'll wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord our God. You reign forever. Our hope, our strong day. We wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord, wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord, wait upon the Lord our God. You reign forever, our hope, our strong. Why this is a song that actually was written by a band called Y Friday. Okay, Y Friday is actually the Youth for Christ band in in Britain, and it started. Uh, you know, they sang the song in a small prayer group, and it became like you know like fire that spreads across the whole of UK. It became a big worship anthem in UK, and then it moved over to America, and then uh, I think a lot of people sang it. Chris Tomlin sang the song and made it really famous. So it's a song that started in YFC, written by people of Youth for Christ, and it's become a all over the world kind of song. So praise God for songwriters who come up with great songs, words that really reflect what we want to worship God. Right. So let's sing one more song. Okay. To dancing, the river of God fills our hearts with cheer. The river of God fills our mouths with laughter, and we rejoice for the river is here. And we rejoice for the river is here. Down the mountain the river flows. It brings refreshing wherever it goes. To the valleys and over the fields, the river is rushing and the river is soaring. River of God sets our feet to dancing. The river of God fills our hearts with cheer. River of God fills our 
much with laughter And we rejoice for the revolution And we rejoice for the revolution For the red God is teeming with life All who touch it can be revived And those who linger on this river shore We'll come back thirsting for more of the world The river of God sets our feet to dancing The river of God fills our hearts with cheer The river of God fills our mouths with laughter And we rejoice for the river is soon And we rejoice for the river is soon To the mountain we love to go to find the presence of the Lord Along the banks of the river we run We dance with laughter giving thanks to the sun The river of God sets our feet to dancing The river of God is our hearts with cheer The river of God is our mouths with laughter And we rejoice in the river is soon the river of God sets our feet to dancing. The river of God fills our hearts with cheer. The river of God fills our mouths with laughter. And we rejoice for the river is soon. And we rejoice for the river is soon. Let's pray. Spirit of God, you are the river of God that flows through our hearts. You're the river of God that fills our hearts with cheer and laughter. You're the one who gives us peace, guidance, joy overflowing. Help us, O Lord, to draw closer to you this evening. Help us, O Holy Spirit, to understand the word as it is spoken. It is your word. And when you speak it to our hearts, we are able to understand. Help us, O Lord, to apply the word in our lives. Pray that the word of God would be like sweet honey to our lips, giving refreshing, strengthening us, satisfying our thirst and hunger this evening. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Okay, so welcome once again after a gap to the grassroots program. Okay, so today is a very, very important uh, topic that we're going to cover it is uh, how to find the will of God okay if God has a will how do I find it many people come and ask me this question mainly for two purposes one is to find the right career you know, for the right job because uh, you know this is a that's a long-term decision so they don't want to make a mistake on that so they come and ask me like what job should I take what career should I follow and then second question they ask is about marriage which person should I marry? What is God's will for me? So these are the main two things that affects us lifelong. And because of that, they're very careful in how they apply God's will to that. So that's why they come and ask me this question. Now, the, the sad part is, you know, they only want guidance for these two things. And they don't want guidance for the daily thing, right? So let's look at um, what the Bible says about God's will and how we can find God's will. Okay, this is a two-part session. So we'll have to do the first part today and the uh, next part, I think maybe next Tuesday, we will do the actual uh, finding of God's will. Okay, We'll do that next week. Today we are going to focus on what are the prerequisites to knowing God's will. Okay, So this is the first part. So let's go to Acts, the book of Acts, chapter 9. Acts chapter 9. And... Um, Okay, this chapter talks about the conversion of this man called Saul. Saul was breathing you know, fire on the Christians. He was persecuting the Christians left and right. And he got these permissions from the high priest to arrest and bring to Jerusalem anybody who is following Jesus Christ, who is calling Jesus Christ as Yahweh. You know? So they, he, he, he thinks that this is a cult and he thinks that this is a heretic uh, religion. So every person who is advocating Jesus as the Messiah should be killed and brought, you know, should be killed and they, their families should be punished. And that's what Saul believes. Okay, So he has taken all these um, documents 
and he's traveling towards this place called Damascus. Now, on the way, something happens to him, and we're going to follow that. Okay, verse three. Now, chapter nine, Acts chapter nine, verse three. Now, as he went on his way, he approached Damascus, and suddenly a light from heaven shone around him, and falling to the ground, he heard a voice saying to him, "Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me?" And he said, "Who are you, Lord?" And he said, "I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting." But rise and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. So here we see that Saul is riding on a horse, and you know he falls down backwards, and he's looking up into this bright light that is shining on him, and he's asking this question, right? So first, the voice from there says, "Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting?" Saul was persecuting the church, but Jesus felt. The pain of the church. So he's asking this question: Why are you hurting me? Why are you persecuting me? And then he asks this question because he thought so far, so long he thought that Jesus was dead, and these people were claiming that he was alive. But you know, dead men don't talk. So here he was, you know, hit with the realization that he was speaking to the resurrected Christ. So he asks this question: Who are you, Lord? The word Lord in his language would be Adonai. Who are you, Adonai? You know, he knows that this is the Lord speaking to him, so he asks this question, and he says, "I am Jesus." So suddenly, in his brain, you know, that equation is working out. Oh, so Adonai is Jesus. Wow, that's new revelation for him. So so far, with the knowledge that he had, he was zealously persecuting the Christians. Now, his equation has changed. He has understood that Yahweh is Jesus. Adonai is Jesus, so I am on the wrong side, and that's going to change now. Okay, so then Jesus gives him the next instruction: rise and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. Okay, so now, so far he was doing whatever he thought was right according to him, but now he wants to do what is right according to Adonai. Okay, so that's how it's changed. So so far, he was thinking that he's doing everything that Adonai wants him to do by doing whatever he wanted to do. But now the perspective has changed. The understanding has come to him, and now he's going to do what Jesus wants him to do. Okay, now that's what finding God's will is all about. Daily living what Jesus wants me to do. Daily doing what Jesus wants me to do. That is God's will. You know? So if God Instructed Saul daily, each step that he has to take, then he would be able to fulfill everything that God has planned through Saul to accomplish. Okay, so that's that's the that's the concept behind this finding God's will. I want to do all that God wants me to do in this life here on earth. So, how should I follow His will? Good evening, Sam. Welcome. So we we are in the discussion of you know how to find God's will. So we are in Acts chapter nine, Saul's conversion. You no, know? and Jesus speaks to Saul in Acts chapter nine and says, uh, "I'm going to tell you what you are to do." Okay, and daily Saul listened to what God wanted him to do, and Saul started obeying everything that Jesus told him to do from that day onwards. So till then, Saul was controlling Saul's life, but from then on. Jesus started controlling Saul's life. Now, what did Jesus plan to accomplish through Saul? What was the long-term goal? Turn with me to Matthew chapter twenty-eight. Okay, Matthew chapter twenty. These are the last words of Jesus, the last commandment that he gave us. Okay, Matthew chapter twenty-eight, verse eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. Okay, Matthew chapter twenty-eight, verse eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. And Jesus came and said to them. All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. He said, "Go," and then he said, "Lo, I am with you till the end of the age." So, this is the great plan that God has. God wants people to become disciples. God wants them to obey all that He commands, so they should also obey God's will. That is God's command. Okay, we should go and tell them this is God's will for you. 
and they should be able to understand and obey god's will for them this is the long term goal evangelism is god's long term goal saving these people making them his disciples followers is jesus's great big plan and when paul started obeying this daily he was able to reach the gospel to the ends of the earth before his death you know when he reached the end of his life and he looked back and he said i have run the race i have kept the faith okay so if you and i have to reach the end of our lives and turn back and say i have run the race i have kept the faith then we should be guided by jesus daily we should be accomplishing this purpose that jesus has for us see if this is the plan for saul then it's the same plan for us the long term goal is the same see but why are we not able to do that why are we not able to even accomplish this will that god has for us this long term plan is this his daily plan strategy is there unless we obey the daily strategy we will not reach the long term goal see so where are we lacking where are we missing see where when i was growing up you know when i was in my school years i was thinking that luck has a big part to play in our lives everything that happens in my life i thought it was chance you know so because of that i used to believe in lotteries you know i used to we had this lottery where the number would be uh, covered by a silver foil so whenever i'm coming back from school you know with the money pocket money that i have i'll buy this small lottery ticket you know it's only 5 rupees and you can you get to, you take a coin and you scratch out that silver foil and you'll get a number and that is that's the lucky number you get prizes you get like uh, you know maybe 500 rupees the great the best amount that i've got is 500 rupees you know prize money so what do we do with 500 rupees my and all my friends the moment i get some money they'll know so they'll come and swarm me and they'll say come on porota chicken and, and so we went and had porota and chicken and we blasted the whole 500 rupees but my thing was you know i i would spend my entire savings on this lottery thing that i'll again get 500 rupees i never got 500 rupees after that okay now luck didn't have any role to play when noah was building the ark you know noah had had to build the ark and be ready by the time god brought the rains so noah did not get the ark ready by luck again abraham you know he left his hometown and he followed god all the way to canaan leaving a comfortable house he listened to everything you know it was not curiosity to see the world that made abraham leave his uh, house and follow god you know, he heard god's voice clearly and he obeyed and he left his hometown and he reached this place called canaan elijah when he was facing all those false prophets of baal he was challenging them he said fire will come down and these guys no, no fire came down how could elijah challenge so many guys that day on top of that mountain it was only because he knew what god wanted him to do you know clearly so god spoke to these men and god led these people and he wants to do the same thing for us now some of them would have heard god speak to them audibly can we do that we'll see that and we'll see how how we hear god audibly also but today i want to focus on what are the prerequisites of it see now abraham is called the friend of god according to the word of god let me let me show you from isaiah chapter 41 verse 8 it's not the only time god has called him his friend even in second chronicles chapter 20 also he calls him okay but i want to show you this isaiah chapter 41 and verse 8 but you israel my servant jacob whom i have chosen the offspring of abraham my friend second chronicles 20 verse 7 also calls him abraham god's friend okay so the bible clearly says that abraham was god's friend now what does it mean friends means see if i have a friend i share my secrets with that friend i share everything that i have with my friend my friend also shares those things with me now let's see what did abraham uh, you know share with god and what did god share with abraham genesis chapter 18 Genesis chapter 18 God comes to Abraham's tent and then Abraham invites him for dinner or lunch okay so he he goes inside and Abraham gives him the best that he can give best food best drink everything God is very happy he promises that you know Sarah will have a child next year this time Sarah will be holding the baby and then he goes outside the tent and as Abraham is doing the clean up job inside the house suddenly God says to himself he said verse 
Genesis 18 verse 17. The Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham what I am about to do? Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. So this is God speaking to himself and saying, Am I going to hide this from Abraham, my friend? You know. So God wants to reveal to Abraham what he has planned for Sodom and Gomorrah. Okay? How he is going to destroy that place. Why he is going to destroy the place. All these things are going to be shared, not to people of Sodom and Gomorrah, but to a person called Abraham, God is going to share. Okay. Now this is what God does. He shares these things with him. Now then we have this intercession that Abraham has for that place. Abraham suddenly remembers Lot and his family. His nephew and his family are there. So he wants to protect them. So he says, what if 50 people are there? And God says, no 50 people. I will destroy. If there is 50 people, I will, I will leave that place. I won't destroy that place. But then Abraham thinks, okay, there is not 50 people. So let me go down a little. Then he bargains and says 40, then 30, then 20. Finally, he reaches 10. And he says, surely there is 10 people. And God says, if there are 10 people, I won't destroy that place. So we see that Abraham is talking to God. Abraham is talking to God. Abraham is talking to God, right? But then let's see the last verse of that chapter. Chapter 18, verse 33. And the Lord went his way when he had finished, finished speaking to Abraham. So all this while it was actually God who spoke to Abraham. Abraham speaking to God was only secondary. And then it says, and Abraham returned to his place. Okay. So when we are interceding with God, also God is speaking to us. Now how do we come to God? When we come to God, we say all that we have to say. <laughs> and then when God has to say something to us, we'll say, God, time going away. You know, we don't have time now. We have other things to do. So can we meet tomorrow and talk about this? Then we'll go again. We'll go out. We leave the place before God leaves the place. Because we are always in a hurry, you see. We are busy people. But there, Abraham was not a busy person. He stood in the presence of God till God left. God had finished speaking. God left. Then Abraham went back to his place. See, So priorities have to change. You know, our, our order of uh, prayer has to change. It's not only me speaking, it is God also speaking. So I have to, if God listens to everything that I am praying to him, I have to listen to what God has to speak to me. You see, Without he hearing his version, his side of the conversation, I can't leave the conversation. You see, that is rude. I would say, you know, if I speak to you and then before I, I give you a chance to speak back, I'll say, uh, as Dan is speaking, you know, I just get up and leave this place. That's rude. <laughs> so God would say, hey, I have so much to talk to you. And I'll say, uh, I know, Lord, you have so much to talk to me, but I don't have time to hear you, you know. So you better listen to what I have to say. I don't have time for you. That's our attitude. So we have to be very careful how we come into God's presence with this attitude. John chapter 15. Let's see what Jesus has to say about this. John chapter 15 and verse 15. John 15 verse 15. No longer do I call you servants. For the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends. For all that I have heard from my father, I have made known to you. See, friends get to know what's on God's heart. Okay? Because Jesus, as a friend, he listens to what the father is thinking in his heart and then tells the friend. Okay, So before these things happen, Jesus is going to speak to me and tell me what the father is thinking about. What the father is planning. So, John chapter 10 and uh, verse 14. John 10 and verse 14 says, I am the hand, sorry, I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. See? So, Jesus is the good shepherd. So, what does that make me? You and I, we are sheep. Okay? And he's our shepherd. We are the sheep. And then the Bible also says how the sheep should behave. John chapter 10 verse 4. When he has brought out all his own, he goes before them and the sheep follow him for they know his voice. So the sheep are sensitive to God's voice. They listen. Okay, this is my shepherd. So I would follow him. See, So the, the, the moment my shepherd calls out my name or you know, he says something, my ears are tuned to him and I listen and I follow. Again, John chapter 10 verse 27. John chapter 10, verse 27. Uh, it says, My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. See, So we are voice sensitive people. When we listen to his voice, 
we hear and we obey so is god speaking to me you know is god really talking to me why am i not able to hear him that's that's a question you know why why is why is a person not able to hear his voice if god is he wants to speak to me he wants me to know what his will is he wants me to obey what i what he's saying but then how come i can't hear his voice how come i can't it's not very clear to me no. because see when jesus speaks also he says in the book of uh, gospels and he says in the book of revelation repeatedly he says let him who has ear hear no let him who has ears hear now when the audience that jesus was speaking to they all had ears <laughs> but most of them did not hear what jesus was actually meaning so what is he really saying you're not talking about just hearing him talk he was speaking about those who will understand what the gist of what he's saying is would you understand the spirit of what i'm saying and then apply that in your life see so literally you would be talking a parable but then at the end of it he would say let him who has ear hear so it means people who heard it just as a story missed the point there is something inside the story for you to apply in your life and that is when you have really heard what he said see so all people have ears but only a few hear what the word of god wants to speak so with that as the background i want to tell you these four things that are prerequisites for understanding his will okay what are the four prerequisites for understanding his will number one is you know i'll give you an example from my own family okay now if i tell my children clean up their cupboard or something you know they hear you but they pretend as though they don't hear me okay so i'll say like okay there is some there are some dirty clothes on the floor take it and put it in the laundry and she like i have to keep telling them three four times then i have to find out who's laund- who's dress is that then call that fellow and say you come take your dress and put it in the laundry okay so i have to keep repeating this so that the message is clearly communicated and that person obeys now instead if i'm going to just give a call like i'm i'm going to whisper you know right here now okay i think tonight we'll go for kfc you know let's go out for ice cream even the person who is in the kitchen will come running and say where why what are we when are we going you know and that excitement is there because i said something which they like cleaning up and doing their chores is you know something that they don't like so this is called selective listening Okay. selective listening is i listen when the stuff that is spoken is interesting to me if it doesn't interest me i would choose to ignore it okay so am i ready not to listen selectively that's the first question that's the first prerequisite that i have you know there was this uh, movie i remember you know when um, uh, mukesh i think was calling his mother from a local booth you know he he wants his mother to think that he's in calcutta and uh, he has made her believe that you know he is an engineer working in calcutta so when he calls this co- phone call there is a nun whose sister who is sitting next to his mom mom is in a shelter you know so uh, when he is speaking to his mother he says like what do you want me to bring from calcutta for you and the mother says you know you just bring yourself to me i just want to see you after such a long gap suddenly the sister who is sitting next to his mom she says i want a woolen blanket from calcutta so she says kambli podupu kambli podupu you know so Ma- mukesh has no plan to buy her anything so she, he says i can't hear you ayyo kekunnilla 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 and he keeps moving the phone farther and further away so this nun keeps shouting kambli pada pada kambli pada you know many times and then there is this uh, you know the the phone booth guy who is sitting there he can hear this voice of this nun very loudly so he says alla maashe eniki ivada kekala kambli pada pada avaru varanadha so mukesh will say you heard it huh? then you do it <laughs> you get her that complete paper i didn't hear it so i'm not going to get it. and they kept the phone any and i'm so this is like selective listening you hear what you want to hear you don't hear what you don't want to hear sometimes when god speaks to us he speaks certain hard things it's truth only but i may not be wanting to obey that so i'll say okay b i want to obey a i will obey see the selective listening so if you are going to selectively listen to what god has to say obey the commands that i like and i don't obey the commands that i don't like then god won't have much to speak to us because he knows the more he speaks about that issue that i don't like i would not even obey him so certain things he will keep from me because he knows that i'm not going to 
obey him so selective hearing people should not expect the lord to lead them and guide them so be careful about selective listening second thing second thing is that you know there are passive listeners passive listeners are you know very relaxed listeners uh, they they keep hearing the same thing again and again they don't even know that they've heard it before Okay. they keep hearing as though they've heard it for the first time they'll keep nodding and they'll say hmm good stuff and lovely stuff and all that they'll come and tell you like you preached very well and all that but they will not even remember one point of what that person spoke okay they are passive listeners they don't care what is spoken they want some great stories and interesting anecdotes and all that good quotations and all but nothing sticks to their mind why because they don't they're not really interested in that thing sticking in their mind they don't they're not in the mood to obey that so they come as passive listeners but there is another group of people who are called uh, some people would say passive op- opposite would be active but i would say more than that they are aggressive listeners aggressive listeners are people you know uh, who really want to respond they say okay i'm going to hear today and what i'm going to hear i'm going to obey today itself see they are aggressive listeners elijah was an aggressive listener you know he, though he heard a still small voice of god speaking he wanted to obey samuel you know when um, uh, not, none of these samuels okay this samuel of the bible okay? <laughs> that guy you know in uh, first samuel chapter 3 uh, you know he's he's lying down in the temple his ears are open to when eli will call him eli is an old man he's a prophet he's a priest and one time god was using him now eli is not being used by god eli can't even hear properly but eli is sleeping upstairs and samuel is speaking uh, sleeping downstairs but his ears are open to whether eli will call him and suddenly he hears god call him and he misunderstands this for eli and he runs up and tells eli you know you called me and eli says no i didn't call you and then he goes back second time again third time again and then eli understands that it's god calling him so eli says next time you hear him tell him lord i i am here you know speak to me your servant is listening so samuel has no has not heard him before like this you know but then this time samuel listens and he says speak for your servant is listening so ears are open okay that is aggressive hearing either it is his boss or god samuel is always listening okay now imagine from the time we got up in the morning till now we heard a lot of noises around us we heard you know people shouting through microphones we saw election campaign people you know shouting vote for that fellow this fellow and all that we had an- announcements we heard songs we heard movie dialogues lot of things all these noises have been ringing in our ears now how do we know in all this noise whether god spoke to us or not you know maybe god had already spoken in this side this we never heard him speak see so sometimes you know we have to uh, look back and check in which instance did i hear god speak to me you know mary was sitting at the feet of jesus and attentively listening to jesus you know she was a aggressive listener martha was busy she was serving jesus only but she was too busy to sit at his feet and hear what he has to say and jesus said mary has chosen the best thing listen at pay attention you know pay attention with intention intention is i want to obey it that's why i'm listening i'm not a casual listener so i see that you know when people take down notes i see that when people you know clarify certain points i know that these people are taking it down so that they don't want to forget these points they don't want to you know ignore these things they want to really obey it the intent is there see so that is listening aggressively okay with an intent to obey so am i ready to listen aggressively am i ready to listen not to listen selectively am i ready to listen aggressively third prerequisite you know when i became a christian when i became saved immediately god's word started speaking to me and i saw a lot of habits in my life which were sinful and immediately i was able to give up those things in my life okay uh, lying was there cheating was there you know smoking was there drinking was there, all these all these sins one of the other holy spirit was bringing to my attention and the word of god would speak to me immediately i was able to get rid of it but somewhere down the line these things stopped the intensity of change stopped the speed started decreasing okay 
So when I look back in my life, you know, I was going in this direction, one straight line, and suddenly there was a slight deviation to the right. Okay, what caused that deviation? There was something which God of God told me to get rid in my life, and I didn't want to get rid of that particular sin in my life. Why? Because that was my pet sin. It was the most cutest sin I could ever imagine. The 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 sin that I really love from the bottom of my heart. All other sin I could easily give up, but this particular sin has got a hold on me because I got a hold on this sin. I don't want to let go of this. See, so on that point, when I selectively chose to disobey God, I changed my route. Okay, and I'm going on a tangent. And then when I look back, you know, I'll say, oh, those were the good old days. when god used to speak to me and i used to listen i used to do great things for the lord now now i am not that useful in god's hands i am not able to hear him say you know so we become nostalgic and we look back and say good old days you know but it's not that god didn't want to you know stop speaking to us it's not that god didn't want to use us is that we went on the tangent and we kept on deliberately disobeying him so he stopped talking So he said, unless you come back to that particular sin from where you deviated, you repent of that and start walking with me again. I can't show you the next step. For a person who has not obeyed step one, God will never show you step two. And if you haven't obeyed step one and two, why should He show you step three? You see. So if I'm here hiding some sin in my life and I'm refusing to confess it. I'm refusing to get that right with the Lord. Then the Lord can't lead me beyond that. Turn it into Psalm 66 and verse 18. Psalm 66 and verse 18. Okay, if you have an underlined this passage in your Bible, I would say you know it's a passage that is so important that we have to underline it. Chapter 66 and verse 18. If I had cherished iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. See, hidden sin in my life. causes this communication gap to come between god and me see cherished sin it doesn't happen with all sin because i know these you know i know lying is sin i know false witness is sin i know you know uh, all, all those stuff is sin but then there are some things that i don't want to give up i went to a uh, fellowship once and then i found out that there is this husband and wife kind of guy and husband is like almost separated from this wife so this husband came and spoke to me and he said The reason why I'm getting separated from my wife is because she's always complaining, always nagging me. So I'm I'm fed up of this, and so I'm thinking of divorce. And then I spoke to the wife. You know, I separated her from the husband, and I called her. And I said, "Brother, is talking like this. You always complaining, always nagging." So he said, "She said, you know what I'm nagging? He tells me that he's going to do certain things today, and then he will not do those things. So by the day end, I'll go and ask him, 'Weren't you supposed to do these things?'" when i going to do that so when i ask him he gets irritated it is those things which he himself said i will do it but now when i remind him he gets angry with it and then i i understood that i couldn't speak to them one session and then get it over and you know, solved so i said okay i'll meet you again second time this brother came to my house and he met me at that time he was saying there was another lady in the fellowship she is living you know uh, her husband is in dubai and she is staying alone here she is a person who really understands him and he is now sharing with her certain things that's happening in his life i said brother that is dangerous you have a wife why don't you share with her I said no no this lady is more understanding it is like god brought this lady into my life so that i can go through this phase i said god would never do that because according to his word adultery is sin and god would not lead you into this temptation knowing that you are going to commit adultery with her he would never do that you know so if it is against god's will why would god lead you to that wrong person so people actually blame it or you say you know excuse is that god brought this person into my life god brought the situation into my life if it leads you to sin it is not god you know it can't be god because god doesn't tempt you the bible says that and god doesn't lead you that's why we pray you know pray and ask the lord lord lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil because he's the one who does that he would not lead you to evil and he would deliver you from temptations you see so if it is contrary to god's will 
God would not be the one behind it. If you are using God as an excuse, that is actually a lie. So, are you ready to give up the known sins of your life? The Bible has already revealed that that is a sin in your life. Are you willing to let go of those pet sins? No. I like this beautiful verse in the Bible uh, where Herod, King Herod, arrested John the Baptist, brought him to his castle and put him in chains. Then the Bible says every day Herod would go down to the prison and hear John preach to him. Single audience. Herod is the only audience. John the Baptist is preaching. He's a fiery preacher and he would be preaching and Herod would be listening. Wow. He liked to hear John preach. You see, what was John preaching on? John would be preaching on salvation, sin, repentance. And one of the key points that he would be addressing is Herod is right now living in adultery. Philip, his brother's wife, uh, you know, Herodia, is now living together with Herod. So John would be saying, get rid of the sin in your life. Give back that man's wife. Confess your sin. Get right with God. You are a king. Set an example for others. King Herod kept on listening to John the Baptist preach. But he refused to give up that one sin in his life. Many things he would have changed. You know, he would have started listening to Christian music. Um, he would have, uh, you know, uh, he would be reading the word of God now. He would be doing a lot of good things. He would be even going to church. But he would not give up Herodias. That is a pet sin in your life. See, everything else I can obey God. But if that one thing keeps me from doing that, that will lead you to, that will drag you to hell. See, that's the danger of it. So, are you ready to give up on the known sins in your life? Then only God needs to speak to you more. When Jesus came into the presence of Herod, he kept his mouth shut. Herod kept on saying, say something to me. Jesus did not speak a single word. Why? Because Herod, Herod had already heard enough and more of God's word from John the Baptist. God has nothing more to speak to him. Unless you obey what John told you, why should God speak to you anymore? You see. Final prerequisite. Okay, so we said three now, ready to, not to listen selectively. Second, to be an aggressive listener. Third, ready to give up on the known sins in your life. And finally, you find in Romans 12 verse 1 and 2. I want um, Dan to read it for us. Okay, Romans chapter 12 verse 1 and 2. Come on, Dan, let's read it. Yeah. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what, what God's will is, His good, pleasing and perfect will. Then you will be able to um, discern what is the will of God. See, see, God wants you to deserve the will of God. Okay, He wants you to know the will of God and do it. But he says there is a condition to it. This is called a conditional promise. If you do this, then God will do this for you. Okay, That's a promise. If you allow yourself, you know, your bodies as living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, and that's your spiritual worship. When you do that spiritual worship and don't conform yourself to this world, but you allow God to transform you every day in the mind, then God will show you the will of God. Wow. That's the promise that God gives. Okay, So the condition is that present your bodies as living sacrifice. The hands would belong to Jesus. My head would belong to Jesus. My feet would belong to Jesus. My tongue would belong to Jesus. You know, sacrifice is supposed to be a dead thing. Okay, But living sacrifice is a, actually a paradox. Why? Because I'm, I'm not dead yet. I'm alive. But I'm giving myself on the altar as if I'm a dead thing. Okay? Which means I can't crawl off the altar and live my own life. Okay? When Jesus says, okay, now whatever is on the altar is mine. So Jesus would say, okay, Manu, today you go to Katakara and you meet this man whom you met last time, this old man. And you speak to him these words that I am telling you. But Jesus, I already have plans to go to Chaka and meet this person. 
and speak some unwanted things that is my plan see so jesus say i thought you offered yourself as a living sacrifice so that means your hand is my hand now your feet is my feet and your lips are my lips so you go to katakara and you meet that person and talk to him i would say just for today i want to go to chaka speak to this man and do all these things this is my desire see so the cross is actually the i being cut okay so i should cease to exist and he should live in me his hands my hands his lips my lips my feet his feet so everything now belongs to jesus this is what you you deny yourself and take up your cross and follow him means this okay i should allow myself to be cut and let his will be done in my life daily this will result in transformation now if you look at this verse it is be ye transformed by the renewal which means it's a daily process every day morning i should decide to offer myself as a living sacrifice today lord my body belongs to you my brain belongs to you my whole self belongs to you so i no longer live as myself myself is gone it is nailed on the cross jesus lives in and through me if that is what is happening then i will be an instrument in god's hands then i will be able to reach the whole world with the gospel then i'll be able to live as saul lived in the first century but if i am living one day monday to friday i am living myself okay myself i am living for myself i am the king of my life i rule and i make my decisions then on saturday and sunday i want jesus to take over he would say where were you all this while you know i i don't operate like that i work on a complete sacrifice you should be daily be transformed because the work you are a work in progress that work will get hindered when you take this sacrifice back from the altar you see that's the problem now the problem is that see everybody who stands still in spiritual life it's like these escalators you can't stand in the same place it will move you back it will move you back if you stand you know still in your spiritual life the flow will push you back and you will go towards death see standing still means the living water won't flow on you you will be actually drinking stagnant water stagnant water is where death is see so you lose the joy in your life you lose the purpose in your life and you start sliding backwards and we call that backsliding see so that's where the danger is you can't stand still in your spiritually you have to keep on growing keep on moving forward otherwise the escalator will draw you back so next time when you have to start you have to start from ground zero and start again and again and again and every time we you know uh, on saturday and sunday we come close to the lord and we move two steps forward monday to friday we live our own life and we we walk 10 steps back and then we wonder at the end of the year you know why am i not growing in my spiritual life why am i not why am i not growing in my relationship with jesus christ no wonder you know because we take two steps forward and we take 10 steps backward then again we take two steps forward we take 10 steps backward this cycle keeps on repeating because we are living for self and we are not living a transformed christian life that's a sad thing so bible says unless you deny yourself and take up your cross and follow me and this process keeps on going every day you will not be transformed your mind will not be transformed so you will not know the will of god and you won't be able to do it you see so the final prerequisite that we have is that are we ready to be transformed daily we want change but are you willing to be transformed you'll become more and more like jesus the more you obey the more you keep on drawing closer to him you will become more and more like jesus and god can use you as powerfully as he used jesus on the earth that's what happened you know saul says follow me as i'm following jesus you seen paul you know what jesus is like you see uh, i like um, this guy uh, no what is his name uh, the prophet with the bleeding feet he, he walked through nepal and all that and preached uh, some uh, I forgot his name he was the missionary who went to nepal and uh, did a lot of work in the himalayas okay when he he comes to pardon me what is his name who was he uh, i was just forgot sadhu sundar singh yes sadhu, sadhu sundar singh sadhu sundar singh whenever he came to a village the children would cry out and say 
Jesus has come to our village because he was working just like Jesus he would teach and preach like Jesus he would touch people and they would be healed he would you know intercede for people and god would listen to him simple faith simple mission work thousands and thousands of people came to the faith because of this man see so if god is able to use a man like him you know he was a hindu he became a believer and uh, he he was he was anti anti christ actually but then he became a believer just like saul became a believer he became a believer and he said god if you can do this through saul you should be able to do it through me and he just believed and he went and god did all these things that he did through paul he did through this man also see so if there is an example for us like this in our generation why can't god use us is because we don't want this much of transformation we don't need little transformation we are happy with that but if you want change and you want the change to last we should be transformed daily people are willing to be transformed like that god is willing to use them like that so the word of god says if you are willing the conditional promise is that if you are willing god will do it for you and you will know the will of god and you'll be going on doing it every day because you're a person who is being transformed daily so the fourth prerequisite is that we should desire to be transformed every day ready not to be listening selectively ready to be aggressively listening ready to give up on known sins in our lives when the word of god reveals it and finally ready to be transformed daily by the holy spirit then you will hear the will of god and you will be able to do it okay so specifically what is his will and how do you find it we're going to do it next week you know what do people say when you know they go to people and they say okay i want this brother to play and tell me what is the will of god can we know god's will like that all those things we'll be handling it next week let's pray heavenly father as we come to you this evening help us to understand that there are some basic steps we need to take before we can hear your voice but the lord wants us to hear his voice the lord wants us to obey him do his will to bring glory to the name of jesus through our obedience help us to surrender ourselves help us to see this change happen in our lives daily not to be satisfied with this one step 10 step back growth help us to be satisfied with fire every day in our hearts the passion that burns inside our hearts to live for god to look back at our lives one day and say we have run the race and kept the faith we will not be satisfied with anything less than that we want to live like sauls we want to live like pauls we want to live like sadhu sundar singh today o lord lead us guide us in jesus name we pray amen